All right, so in previous video, we covered interactions. So now you know how to build a visual, how to interact with it. We can now move on to the formatting options. In this case, we're gonna go through the donut slash pie tab. It's gonna be depending on the visual. Next one is gonna be the sorting. And afterwards, we're gonna also go through the legends tab. Now, as always, you have your two tabs that you can go through, the pie and the donut visual. So you can see some pre-configured variations. But for us, we're gonna go through the training view and we can actually build everything from scratch. Now, first things first, we can also create a donut instance. So right here, we can add an instance, we're gonna resize it, and we can also disable the background and the title because we don't need them really in this situation. Afterwards, we're gonna be using region as our main category. So region goes here. We're gonna add also payout as our value. And I'm actually gonna add department also so we have two level system here. Now, going into the formatting options, you can see since I'm using the donut visual, I have a donut tab. If I would be using a pie visual, I would have a pie tab. Opening that up opens up additional settings. So first, you have two settings regarding the radius, the outer radius and the inner radius. The outer radius defines how much of the container size is the visual trying to fill. So for example, if we increase it to 80%, you can see the donut itself becomes bigger. The other thing is inner radius. The inner radius allows you to define where does the inner part of the donut actually start. Now, inner radius is a setting that's only applicable to the donut visual. So you will not have this setting when you're working with a pie visual. Afterwards, you have your enable gauge and enable 3D effect. Now, regarding these is we do have support for these, so you can play around with them and see if they work for your use case. The other thing to keep in mind here is that any visual effect that you apply on the visual, so things like 3D effect, animations, or so forth, they are gonna hinder the performance. So make sure you double check on all your devices if the visuals still work properly on a live environment. Now, going forward, we have something that we're really proud of, and that's the other slice. By default, you can see that it's enabled and the number of slices is 15. Well, what we can do here is we can easily define how many number of slices you wanna set there, and that is gonna be the top end for the donut chart. So for example, I'm gonna switch it to be three. So you can see I have first, second, and third contributor, and then I have the other slice. The great part about the way on how we built the other slice is because it's still an interactive slice. So if I click on it, it actually moves down to the next three contributors. So now I'm looking at four, five, and six. And this is the rotation where you can go from one group to another group to focus on what's important right now. Now, another thing you can notice here are these labels right here. So others and previous. By default, these are always gonna be in English, but within the formatting tab, you have additional settings right here. Others label and previous label. So these are free text fields, which allows you to customize them to your preference. You can localize them, you can rename them, just make sure it helps the user to understand the chart. In our case, for example, we can go and see how many slices we have here. So three, six, nine, perfect. So what we're gonna be doing here is gonna be the others, I'm gonna call bottom three or lower three. You can work around with these numbers. And the previous is gonna to be top three. So in this case, what I'm essentially doing is I'm renaming them so it allows the user to understand what does the other consist of. So for example, if I click on it, you can see I move to the bottom for three more slices. And that's the way how you can play around with it. Now, going forward, you also have additional settings for the sorting mechanisms. By default, we're always trying to follow best data visualization practices, which is why the donut chart is always going to start at 12 o'clock, which is straight up north. Now, the data is going to be sorted in a descending manner based on a value. Now, of course, you can customize it if it's necessary. The data sorting options are descending or ascending. And the third option is Power BI built-in. What this means is once you choose it, you can actually use the built-in sorting from the ellipsis. So you can sort by a custom column if it's necessary. Otherwise, you can keep the original one on descending. And you can also choose whether the sorting is happening based on value or name. So all these options are available for you, for you to make sure that you're visualizing things how your end user is used to or how you want it to visualize them. Now, I'm gonna go back to the value itself. Last but not least, within the donut tab, you have the others and previous sizing. 
So here we actually have two options. We have a default one, which is essentially a custom sizing mechanism. And what happens here is you can see that these bottom three, or in this case, actually there's six slices underneath it. They consist for 36%. If I click on it, you can see that Caribbean, for example, is 7.73%. Visually, that is definitely not 7%, right? It's something in the middle of 25, 30, something like that. So what we're doing here is we're sizing these slices relatively so you can actually see them in comparison. This is gonna be really useful for those cases if we go even lower, where for example, you can see that this is 1.37%, this is 4%. So the slices have a proportion system between them. So this is gonna be really useful, like I said, for those cases where you have a lot of small slices, where you have slices which are really close to each other. Now, if we go back to the top level, we can also switch the sizing mechanism to something more common, and that's gonna be actual. So like the name says, we're gonna always be sizing the slices on the actual size and dimension. So if we open up bottom three right now, you can see that instead of relatively scaling those, we're actually positioning them in one specific side. Now, this just helps you to notice and see where the information is going. And these others in previous slices, like I said, they just allow you to eliminate all the distractions, all the other colors, and focus on what's relevant right now. Now, once we're done with the donut and pie tab and the sorting, we're gonna go through the legends. So for that, I'm just gonna quickly go back to the top menu. I'm gonna close the donut tab, and we're gonna go right here on the legends. So by default, the legends is gonna be disabled. So you have to manually enable them if you wanna use them within a visual. So right here, I can just turn it on. You can see legends right here. And I can open up the tab and have additional formatting options. First, we have our position. So you can place it on top, bottom, left, or right. Depends on the use case and how you wanna visualize things. Now, one thing that you can even notice right here is because I don't have enough horizontal spacing, some of the labels get cut off. So this is something you also need to take into consideration by adding additional elements because the chart has to resize accordingly. Now, once I resize it, we're gonna go back to these settings. So for the legends lock, you also have a height and width property. So you can define how much of the size from the container is it actually gonna be taking. From there on, we can move on to marker shapes and sizes. So you can adjust those as well. For example, right now we have squares, we can easily move to triangles or something else. Next is gonna be the font colorings font colors, styles, sizes, and also the family. So these options are also something that you can use here. Now, something a little bit more interesting that we added here is something we call the floating effect. Now, by default, this is gonna be disabled. What it essentially means and what it does is it allows you to make sure that the legends block is allowed to overlap with the visual block. That's one thing. And the other thing that happens is you can see that the chart itself is actually getting centered in the middle of the container. So one thing to notice about this, for example, in this situation is I have three legends, right? I still have enough room so I can drill down and I can see all the labels. If we go into USA, like I did just now, you can see this is the drawback that you have to be careful about. When you enable legends, you allow these two blocks to surpass. So if you have a lot of labels that are gonna be in the corner where you have your legends, you're gonna have a situation like this where you know you can't read any of them. So in these situations, you can play around with the placement or you can even figure out to just disable the floating effect and have separate tabs for it. But in, for example, this situation where I enable it, I can go into other categories and you can see it fits a lot more nicer. So you just have to play around with them and see that the visual has enough room to display all the labels. All right, that's gonna be it for the Donut and the Legends tab, and I'll see you in the next chapter.